John Follis, thank you so much for coming on from the Big Idea video. You're the creative director of this. Yes. And in on this website, you have started something called the Bully Video Project, and we'll get to that in just a second. Sure. But first, let's let's do the march up to who the heck you are. You're a big time ad guy. Came out of New York City. So give me a little background about how you came up through advertising, which got you to the Bully Video Project. Well. Wow. That's, that's, it's a long story. But well, bring yeah, it on. Yeah. Well, started out in New York, had my own agency with a partner. We were very successful. Uh, that ended in the mid-90s. I uh, saw the internet, uh, the, I guess they called it the information superhighway coming along back then. And I wasn't what is that? <laughs> I wasn't sure what it was, but there was a lot of buzz about it, and that's when I decided to kind of go my separate way, leave my partners, a very successful agency, and uh, I started consulting. I was doing a lot of traditional advertising for a lot of smaller companies, but I was also beginning to get involved with internet-related things. I was starting to do some internet banners. Remember the banners? They're still banners. So you were starting, because you were pushed into it. You well, I was just, I wasn't really, no, I wasn't, it was, a, it was a decision I made because I had heard that it was Here coming. It and I just, I, I, I felt that it was time for me to kind of take another leap I think we all have to take leaps in our careers. But that's scary. And it was scary. And I wasn't sure where I was going with it. But I, I was dabbling. Um, our, our first website, our first agency one, uh, website went up in 96. And shortly after that, I started getting involved with online videos. I'm a Mac guy, and I don't know what year it was that iMovie came out, but whatever year that was, I guess it was the mid or late 90s, I started dabbling in iMovie. And when I had my ad agency, we were doing a lot of TV commercials, 30 seconds, but a lot of 15 second right. format, well, you shorter you were working format. with a crew. I mean, you weren't doing that yourself. We, you would bring no. a crew in, of course. Yes. We had clients. We had budgets. They uh, wanted to do TV, so we hired a production company. So I was never doing the production. I was the creative director. But there were many times, Anne, where I would sit in the post-production room and I'd say, no, 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 take, you know, take another second off of that or fade it in quicker. Oh, just, just tell me what buttons to push. You know, I really felt that if I had control over it, uh -huh. I, could, I could craft it the way I wanted. Because a lot of these guys, they knew the technology, but they didn't have any... The touchy-feely They didn't part. have any finesse. Right. They didn't have any creative right. finesse. Okay. So all of a sudden, when Apple comes out with this thing called iMovie and enables someone at their computer to, to craft videos, I thought, hey, this is fun. So I started doing that, a lot of personal stuff, some professional stuff, and eventually that led to what, what I started last year, which is Big Idea Video. Explain what that is. Big Idea Video is what, it, what the name says it is. It's, it's high concept, high impact videos. There's a lot of video content out there that you're just not going to remember. There's just Oh, there's millions and millions and millions of videos being uploaded to YouTube. Right. You know, in 10 seconds. And I know you, you could go on YouTube and have a laugh watching a cat playing a piano, whatever. But a lot of businesses realize that they have to grab people's attention. They have to, um, they really have to engage someone with their message. And because of my creative advertising training, I'm trained to be able to communicate a message in a very short format, 30 seconds or 15 seconds. So I've taken that traditional TV advertising training and applied it to an online video format, which is what I call uh, big idea video. Now that, that also, in addition to these, what I call high concept, high impact videos, have you heard the term explainer videos? Bring it on, no. Okay. Explainer videos is something that is becoming very popular that past couple of years, more and more companies realize the need, they need realize that they, they need to do something uh, a little bit longer format um, and, and kind of explain what their business is. A lot of B2B businesses okay. who, who do something that's kind of esoteric that most people would not really know. To get people's attention, to cut through the clutter. Well, to explain, to explain what it is. And what an explainer video does it, it usually uses uh, little animations, graphics, cartoon graphics, okay. or what they call these little whiteboard animations where they have a handwriting. But the idea of Cheap it... Cheap to produce. Very yeah, inexpensive to produce, uh, depending on what you have to say. Uh, but it's a lot different than a big idea video, which is very short f 
format high impact. This is more of a storytelling thing, usually about 60 seconds. So this is another format that we do as big idea videos. We do these explainer type videos as well. So you took your background from Madison Avenue and got on the super information highway, changed your thinking a little bit, became an innovator, and got out front of some of the stuff that was, that was coming down the line. Somewhere along the line, you decided to do what you're here tonight to talk about is the Bully Video Project. All right. Explain what this is. You know, early on in my career, I was working at one of the top New York agencies, and the founder of that agency, a guy by the name of Bill Burnback, had this quote that said, the advertising people in this country are the most skilled communicators in history. Imagine if they use those skills toward solving human problems. Imagine the difference it can make. And when I heard that quote, I must have been, I don't know, 24, 25 you were a years kid. old. Yeah, that <laughs> there was something about that that really resonated because I thought it was true. Imagine if we use, you know, it's fine to sell Twinkies and Ding Dongs and whatever your clients are paying you to sell, but it's also nice when you have the opportunity to use those skills and communication talents toward uh, solving problems. So that's something that I started to think about doing and got involved with doing uh, in my 20s. Uh, I didn't always have the time to do that because uh, I don't have a lot of time now, but with the evolution of my business now with Big Idea Video, I thought this is kind of a win-win situation. Let me find a cause that I can apply my creative skills with video and, and uh, uh, promote it through Big Idea Video, but find something that is going to reach a lot of people. And you know, build, bullying is something that um, it's such a problem. When I was a kid, I was bullied. I was going to ask you. Yeah. Is that why you have this up there? Tell me that's, what happened. That's one of you know. What are the reasons? What happened to you? Because I think this is leading yeah. to a lot of the problems in this country right yeah. now. Some of the shootings are probably caused by bullying. Um, you know, this is and because we have these things, our iPhones and our com and our computers, we can sit at home anonymously and yeah. put people down, and that's causing big problems for kids. So what happened to you when you were a kid? Yeah, it's, it's a, unfortunately, it's one of those problems that seems to be getting bigger instead, of, instead of smaller. And I think, of, as you said, one of the causes for that is the Internet. You know, the, a lot of stuff, it's so easy to share, and it's anonymous, and it's just a very easy way to torment something. So it's a real problem. And uh, What happened to you, Well, John? I don't know. You know, it's just probably normal stuff. Um, but it makes you feel icky. Junior high school. There were days where I didn't want to go to school the next day because there was a period of, uh, I guess it was a year or two, where there were some bullies. And uh, for some reason, I was the focus. I was kind of a shy kid back then. I was a skinny kid. And uh, you're, you're vulnerable. If you're shy and you're skinny and you're, you're, you're sensitive, you're, you can be the object of uh, bullying. It doesn't take much to be the object of bullying right now. And I remember those days. And uh, I, you can't go a week or two without reading something in the paper or reading, seeing something online or seeing it on the news about bullying. And I was having a conversation with a friend of mine. It came up in conversation. So that's when, about uh, 10 months ago, I decided uh, bullying would be a good cause to get involved with. OK, let's take a look at some of the videos that you sure. put together from the mouth of babes, if you will. Yep. Let's take a look. Sure. If you see, if you see, if you see a bully picking on someone, or some girls, any girls, being mean to another, it's not easy to say something. It's not easy to do something. It's not easy to tell someone. But that doesn't mean, it doesn't mean, that doesn't mean you shouldn't. Okay, this is a series of videos that you have put up. What are you asking kids to do? Because this is a powerful message that they get to have a voice to yeah. say, this is what's happening to me. So how do kids in the state of Connecticut and around the world get to put this video up on your site? Well, this is my master plan, right? My master plan is to, first of all, get exposure for these videos. 
which are now on that Facebook page. I want to mention, I'm glad you have this graphic up there because I want people to go to Facebook. They and can, type in the Bully Video Project. That's right, the Bully Video Project in Facebook. It'll take them right to that page. You can see all four of the spots that are on there. And if you like the Facebook page, then that will be a way to share that with people in your Facebook network so more and more people uh, can see that. But on that Facebook page is a explanation of how this works, which is what I'm going to explain right now. And basically, I'm asking people, people, students, to rip this off. Use this as a template. If you'd like, you don't have to, but if you'd like, because it's very, very simple, and get your friends, get your iPhone or your, your smartphone or your iPad, whatever you can shoot video on. And these days, kids are smart. It's, it's amazing what, what they can do with, a, with an iPhone or an iPad. And if they, they can't do it personally, they know someone who can edit it together. But that's the idea, is to basically use this as a template. And this is why I'd really like to get schools involved, because even though kids are smart and maybe if they got their friends together and knew someone who knew how to edit on an iPad, they could create this and then send it to me or put it on YouTube and then tell me about it so I can then embed that on my Facebook page and my YouTube channel, which is now getting a lot of traffic. So that's going to be the focus of it. Um, but if, if we can get some schools uh, involved with this and uh, help support the kids in making this a school project and get schools throughout the state to do this where all, they can all submit their videos and maybe even have a contest where uh, everyone gets a chance to vote or like the video. I have this vision of the governor uh, being willing to uh, donate iPads to the winning high school or middle school that gets the most vote for the anti-bully video. I hope he's listening. I hope he's listening. If not, <laughs> we'll, we'll make sure he sees this. But how cool would that be? Because, you know, not that they need, need an incentive, but it's a win-win situation. It's something that the parents could get, the, the teachers can get excited about, the parents, the PTA organizations can get excited about, uh, the administrators, I think the politicians, because bullying is a very real problem. We've got to get behind it now because the situation is dire. You know, every day in the news I see shelter in place, shelter in place, shelter in place because there's a shooting. Whether it's mental health issues or it's somebody who was so bullied into a, sees no way out, you know, yeah. who, who knows what it is. But I think you have now, whether you know it or not, have taken on a leadership role in this. And I hope that you get a, a ton of videos by kids saying, I want to have a voice and I want to have this stop now. It's a, it's a way for kids to be involved and uh, be part of the solution. And, and I think what's important to mention, Anne, is that it's not easy. You know, when I thought about these scripts, when I wrote these scripts, I really had to kind of break down what is the message here. I didn't want to just do a video campaign that reminded people that bullying is bad and it's wrong. We know that. We don't need to see another video campaign with a kid holding their books in a school hallway and them getting knocked out. You know, that, that's been done. That's not necessarily going to change an action. But what I'm hoping kids will do if they see this and share it with their friends is if, they, if they're in a situation that they'll think that it's not cool. It's just not a cool thing. You know, when you're that age, it's all about what's cool and what's right. not cool. So I don't know if it's possible, but my, my, my goal here is try to make it cool to stand up to, against bullying, to do something. And whether it be saying something in that moment, which is very, very difficult. You know, I can't say that that's what a kid should do. It's really up to that kid whether or not he feels he's got the courage, because it does take a lot of courage when you're, when you're in the middle of that, because sure. all of a sudden that bully can turn on you and you could then be the focus of bullying. But whatever it is, if it's not standing up in that moment, it's then uh, telling an adult, but, but doing something, taking some kind of action. Because if you don't take an action, it's not going to stop. And what was great about this campaign is that I got a chance to talk to some of the kids and ask them about their experiences with, with bullying. And a lot of the kids who were part of this campaign had been bullied. 
And I asked them about that. And some of them said they did report it. They did tell their, their teachers. And the teachers handled it in, in, a, in a way that enabled the bullies to stop. So it, it can work. I'm not a psychologist. I'm not a school administrator. But you're one person that's, that's taken the lead on this. I, 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 can, I can do what I can do. But if, if the teachers are trained properly, uh, I think they can address the situation and get it to stop because that's what happened with a lot of these kids spoke up and took an action and that's what I want the kids to try to do. John Follis, it's admirable. Thank you so much. People should go on the Bully Video Project on Facebook, upload their videos and we'll see where this goes. An ad guy from New York City with a great idea. Thank you, Ann. Thanks so much for coming on.